Welcome to part six of my video series, How to Make a Slim Tower. Uh, when we last left off, we finished attaching the edge pieces to the center core mechanism. Um, <clears throat> now, in order to move on to the corners, which we're now starting to get to the easy parts of the build, in order to attach the corners, what you need to do is you need, need to make sure, of course, that your edges are, are uh, pretty well lined up. Um, we already did most of our measuring and gluing in the last video, but we want to take another look at the puzzle and try to determine what will make for good corner alignment. Um, since, as I said before, the, the corners rely on the edges for, for alignment, we want to make sure that the edges are, well, aside from being centered on the puzzle, we want to make sure that the edges, when we look at them, are, are fairly consistent with each other. Uh, because, truth is, your puzzle will never be aligned as well as it is when you first put it together like this. Uh, but we'll get into that get into more of that later. So our corners, uh, which we have here, um, of course we have our eight corners for that. And I said that earlier uh, there would be two uses for these little uh, pieces that we cut off the original uh, the original corners of the Rubik's cube. We cut those off. I said there would be two uses. Now the first use, of course, was to help to align our middle edge pieces. Um, like so. But now they have our second use, and that second use is we're going to use them as spacers for these corner pieces. Uh, what do I mean by that exactly? Well, first of all, take a look at these four pieces. Now these four pieces are, have already been glued inside. Um, so what you need to make sure of when you do this is that inside of the puzzle piece there's no um, little bumps or, or other bits of flash like uh, you may not see it in the video here but uh, if you look carefully here there's a flash left over from where this piece was molded from the original uh, factory well if that piece is not in the way then fine and dandy this piece needs to sit flat on the bottom of that of that uh, cube piece it has to sit flush at the bottom of it and you have so you have to, so you have to make sure that uh, none of the pieces have any little bits of flash left over. Now you can scrape that up with a knife and just pull it off with a pair of pliers, whatever. Point is, it has to lay flat. Not perfectly flat, that doesn't really matter, but it has to really lay flat enough to where it's not uh, basically bumping up a little bit. The reason for that is because when these pieces are sitting against uh, our edges here, like so, what we don't want is for these pieces to be um, pushed up from within the corner piece so that you have a gap in alignment. So that's why you need these pieces to sit flat. Now when you make these pieces sit flat on the inside here, what happens is you leave a tiny little gap in between, and now again imagine this piece is inside of one of these corners, imagine that. Now when you sit the piece down flush like that, there's a tiny little gap in between. Uh, about a you know credit card's worth of thickness. Uh, so that's why you don't want to stick up too far. The purpose of that? Well, the purpose of that is for gluing. That little bit of gap is is uh, for the glue, for the specifically the, the epoxy. So first things first, you want to make sure that the corner and the edge look reasonably well aligned. And again, you can uh, just look at it with your eyes and basically what you're looking for is something along this, these lines. So if we have our edge piece looking like this, what you want is to make sure that your corner piece seems to be nice and even. If you imagine your corner piece here, you want it nice and even. Terrible square. Okay, so you want to make sure that um, this this bit here is about equal to this and that that uh, this line sits parallel with the piece of the cube there so again again you want that to be even with each other these two bits and that these two lines are parallel and again I don't remember how to mark that the lines are parallel but you get the point and that the thicknesses of these two pieces are about the same with each other and again it's just a matter of consistency take a look um, if you're not sure whether this is properly aligned or not on the top, just do this. Uh, give the puzzle a couple of quick twists this way. And like this, 
and then and you get again you might notice that this thing's not perfectly flush on top well just line it up as close as you can and then take the bottom layer and just give it a few rotations and with that your top should be pretty well aligned okay so now that you're looking at this uh, you're wondering to yourself alright again how do I make sure that these pieces are perfectly aligned on top now we could do this we could glue pieces one at a time but this gets kind of messy and the reason that gets kind of messy well let's face it you're still doing pieces one at a time and I don't like that it's too slow so this is what I do take a couple of pieces of plastic card or it could even be pieces of stiff cardboard doesn't really matter use a rubber band and rubber band your central mechanism take your pieces of plastic card stick them right through here just like that okay uh, alright now here's the idea for aligning the corners maybe you've already figured it out just by watching me do this part take four of your prepared corners that's not a prepared corner <laughs> take four of your prepared corners so you look at your face that has the uh, that, that you've just finished aligning and of course the opposite side is uh, not aligned doesn't matter the idea is you're going to put a dab of two-part epoxy on the top of these little flat faces and you have to go kind of quick because sometimes the epoxy will run out you know just kind of drip down and you know then it'll uh, not be thick enough to apply um, if that's the case you might want to use something like uh, like this this is a gel epoxy um, it's a little bit thicker so it doesn't flow as much uh, but again I'm just gonna use my plain old epoxy to do, do, to do this you apply a little bit of epoxy or a, a little bit more than a little bit apply it to those flat spots all four do it quickly then take this with your plastic cards on it and just slide it right on top make sure to give it a nice little press here just to make sure that that the puzzle is not uh, you know th that one of these cards isn't like pushing down so far that it's preventing you from uh, you know getting a nice smooth match you want to make sure it's press down nicely even you know pull them up a little bit and then let the epoxy sit 